course, it was too much to put in this this short film series. And I think the director felt some of this stuff was a little too way out there. But because this, you know, you know, the whole film is his take as someone who knows nothing about the subject, so it was quite a learning curve for him. But what I tell people is that the next thing I want to put out there is going to be on what you're discovering with these giant probable ET beings in Sardinia and elsewhere. But what we want to do also with this Atacama humanoid, which, by the way, from meeting with all these wonderful South American researchers who were in Washington last week, we were able to um, put together that there are probably three or four additional bodies that are similar, if not identical, to the Atacama humanoid. Now, there are people who don't know what I'm talking about. In the film Sirius, there is featured this uh, mummified skeletal remains that we think is at least 100 years old. Um, and the team at Stanford University has concluded it's a six- to eight-year-old uh, child. And it is absolutely not a fetus. But it's only six inches, 13 centimeters. And you don't have six to eight-year-old children live to be six inches big, period. Uh, and what's interesting is the genetics so far is showing that it has a lot of genetics identical to us. However, 9% of the genetic material is unmatched. And now the geneticist is saying, well, we don't know what that's from. It could be computer error. It could be this. It could be that. But in reality, you know, we all know it was a very high-quality genetic sample. It did not have to go through a lot of PCR replication, which I won't go into what that is. The bottom line is that there should not be 9% that's unmatched. And even if a third of it is legitimate genetic material that controlled that being, that would be 3%. 3% would be make that creature more different from you and me than we are from chimpanzees. And I point out to people that it's quite a mystery because now we've learned that there is an even smaller one, a younger one, that's in the possession of somebody in Santiago, Chile, and that uh, there may be a mine in Chile where they, when they were mining, they cut into an underground city that was this miniature city where these small creatures lived. And so we really hope at some point, if we can get the, the, the research funds in place, to take an expedition there because it's quite a story. But, you know, a lot of people, a lot of the folks in the media, when they saw from the geneticist report that there was a lot of human DNA in, in this particular body, said, oh, well, it's human. Well, no, nobody knows that yet. He doesn't know it. Nobody does. And it turns out there are two million base pairs of genetic material that is unmatched. That's a very big number. And unfortunately, what that means is that it's probably going to be one to five years before anyone can go through those two million base pairs and see what it is. Now, you know, if you were taking it from a known human living person, you would just throw it away into the trash can. But what the top uh, professor at Stanford University said, and by the way, if you want to read his report, it's at SiriusDisclosure.com, S-I-R-I-U-S, Disclosure.com. You can link right to the, this Atacama report, and it has Dr. Lockman's report where he says, number one, this is no known genetic defect he's ever seen, and this is the world's expert on skeletal abnormalities and defects. He says, number two, it's a six- to eight-year-old by bone density and the growth plates, and not just in the knee but the entire body, we learned two nights ago. He said, oh, no, it's not just the, that one joint. It's the entire body, which he did not say in the report. Number three, the genetics have been run for the parts of the genome that would normally control for dwarfism or advanced bone aging that could explain why it looks like a six- to eight-year-old and it's only six inches long. All those genes are normal. So there's something very strange going on here. And this from the top scientific team in the world on this subject at Stanford University. Um, and so there's so much more research to do. I, I doubt within a, maybe a year to five years we'll, we may have an answer. The problem is we're trying to run genetic material, but we don't have an ET genetic database. We only have a human one. So the fact that a certain amount of it's matching isn't surprising because it's a humanoid. But on the other hand, you have to understand that a Neanderthal, which is a totally different species from humans, 
it's Homo neanderthalus, is 99.5% identical to modern humans. So it's only 0.5% difference between a human, a modern human, and a Neanderthal. So we're dealing with something where to go into this 9%, which is a pretty big number, of unmatching DNA, and run that to ground, going through 2 million base pairs of DNA material, is an enormous research project that's going to have to involve probably dozens of scientists around the world, and that's what the, the team at Stanford is trying to put together. Well, it's really impressive, and it's also impressive that it's that, that science is, is being used in that way, you know, to look for uh, uh, ET uh, genome, and, and, and maybe that'll be a byproduct or a spinoff of the whole entire research uh, in this field. Well, well, I think this is why I'm suggesting to you that if the folks who have these artifacts from uh, Sardinia, if there is, if there are bones, and if the bones are uh, at all intact and not pulverized or fossilized, then inside the bones will be bone marrow, which will be rich in DNA. Remember, the way we got the DNA for, from this Atacama humanoid, this little six-inch six to eight year old child was that we clipped the the the, the ribs the bones of the the, in the ribs and found inside those ribs really rich bare, bone marrow that was very dry but very well preserved and that's how we got the dna material so if you have bones there should be dna material uh, you can't really get it out of the calcified bones material per se, but like if you have a tooth, you would have the the core of the tooth uh, that would have DNA, and if you have a bone, then you have the marrow that would have DNA. So, you, you know, there's a very good chance that we would be able to extract carefully DNA from those samples and see what exactly that is. And it'd be interesting to see how related those creatures are to humans um, and you know it could be that the Native American people who said that you know look we've uh, somehow been descended from the stars and, and these beings from the stars are our ancestors maybe it's not just mythology maybe it's quite literally true well I have no doubt it is it's just that just like anything else the modern uh, you know anthropology can't doesn't have any kind of uh, reference for it, so they just eliminate it, and that's it, right. It, it, and and that's a problem because these people have been threatened. I mean, when I was speaking to to Luigi, he was telling me they've been told to shut up, they've been told not to talk about it, and they they've been told not to bring you know cameras there and so forth. But but we'll all keep trying because no matter how we come to it, no matter which road we all take, we're all going to the same place. To get to the truth. Exactly. And, you know, that's why when we, we uh, shortly after we, we began to release the information on this uh, Chilean uh, uh, body, this Atacama humanoid, uh, we found out that in 1996, and I remember now, I was called in uh, to code of Russia uh, to look at a body that had been acquired that was a little bit larger. Maybe it was, uh, I guess, maybe upwards of maybe close to a foot. It might have been more of an adult version of the one that's in Chile that we're doing the DNA on, and it was one that was living that had been captured by some eccentric woman who tried to keep it alive, but it died in her captivity. And unfortunately, before I could get there and, and we could get any samples, it was seized by the um, allegedly by the FSB, which is the uh, entity that took the place of the KGB in Russia, and it's it was lost to follow up. However, there are photographs and videotape of it that we've recently acquired, and you, when you look at the skull of this, that particular creature, and you look at the skull of the one we're doing the studies on at Stanford. It's the same, and it has four skull bones instead of six like we have uh, in, in the cranium. It has very similar plates in how they, they overlap and fuse. It's in remarkably similar. Now, whether it's identical or not, we'll never know unless we can get a genetic sample 
uh, or at least get a good CAT scan and MRI or, or uh, uh, good X-rays. But um, we and we may not if in fact it did get confiscated by the intelligence services in Russia. But even the fact that there's existing photos and videos of something that looks very similar, um, we think that there may be more of these uh, that are of the same species of what we have from the Atacama desert of Chile, which is why we call it the Atacama humanoid. But we may, of course, have other things to investigate if at some point you could help facilitate access to these remains that are in Sardinia because that may be another entire uh, species to examine um, and to get uh, evidence for. So, and, and in fact, one of the things that's exciting about the team at, at Stanford is that they're very willing to continue this process with other legitimate specimens. Well, that's wonderful. Well, we're, we can go at it from from that angle. And uh, in the meantime, I, I will be looking up to, at the skies in Europe, as you will in England, and we'll just, you know, keep uh, talking about the film and, and just keep going at it. Right. And remember, everyone can sign up. If you go to our website, SeriousDisclosure.com, you can become an affiliate for the film and sign up, and everyone in your group or organization that sees the film through you linking them to it, uh, you will be able to get a a portion of the proceeds of the film to support your own research and your own efforts. So um, it's it's sort of a way of virally getting the the film out so it benefits everyone who's trying to do these good things in the world. So anyone interested can do that. It costs nothing to become an affiliate. And if you haven't seen the film yet, uh, I you know would encourage you to, to see it at, at our website. You can see it on video on demand, and you can also order the DVD. And also, you can uh, we will be able to see it on the big screen as a theatrical release at these uh, Oscar uh, award nominating qualified venues. And that's a very specific criteria, by the way. Again, it'll be at the Quad in uh, New York City from May 31st until the 6th of June, and it will be uh, at the same dates in uh, Los Angeles at the Lamley there in Beverly Hills. Um, so uh, we'll have more information on our website about that as it gets closer closer to the time. But that's it. if you want to see it on the big screen, that's where we're doing a, a whole week rollout in those two large cities if you're in those areas. So... Um, well, we're about out of time. I, Paula, I just want to thank you so much for everything you've done. You've done such great, amazing work and research all over the world and have kept the, kept the good fight. And um, thank you so much for your help and support. And thank you, Steve. Thank you so much because you're really a hero to me, and, and we'll just keep going. We are going to keep going. It's awesome. So we'll see you soon. And to everyone at the World Fusion Network, thank you for hosting us here. I really appreciate your help and support. And I hope everyone uh, will uh, go to our website and see the film and network it to others. The proceeds of the film are going to a research fund to create a new energy lab so that we can bring out these sciences and technologies quickly and safely so we can get off of fossil fuels. And that is the, the, the purpose that we created this film, as well as educating the public. So go there and let everyone you know uh, that, uh, on your email list and your, your Twitter feed and, and social network and Facebook know about it, because that's really how, at this point, we're getting the word out about the film. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, keep looking up. God bless you. Bye-bye.